What's cracking, Super Hackers? It's your boy, the Super Hack Bro, Terrence Coleman, and welcome to an all new episode, an all new season of the Born to Play Lounge. Today, we're going to get things started with a beautifully delicious cocktail that I created myself. It is called a salty turkey. I call it a salty turkey, but it is because it is going to be made with hot salted caramel cocoa as well as wild turkey one-on-one -on -one whiskey, okay? And then I'm gonna also have a nice little added flake, add a little, add a little pizzazz, add a little extra to it, and I'm gonna do myself a nice, delicious bourbon float that's gonna have a real small touch of vanilla flavor added to that as well, okay? So super hackers, let's get started. Let's get started. So this beverage is gonna consist of two ounces of wild turkey 101 whiskey it's also going to consist of the uh three scoops of the private selection that's the private selection hot chocolate that is salted caramel okay that's private selection salted caramel hot chocolate private selection if you aren't familiar is a kroger brand and man listen muy fuego everything that i've gotten from these people or from this brand from kroger's own little uh, private selection has been just hit every time. Hit, hit, hit every single time, man. The salted caramel ice cream, phenomenal. Probably one of my best things from their private selection. Their salted caramel cookies, the ones that you know that come in the little the square, you break those little squares off and then you bake them. Phenomenal. And now I just got hip to this freaking hot chocolate salted caramel, salted caramel hot chocolate, oh my God. So I also made this beverage for a few friends, so I modified the ingredients just a little bit, and that's why now I add a little bit of vanilla, which they haven't had yet, so I'm excited to try that myself because I haven't had, I haven't tried with the vanilla yet. And my original recipe, I called for oat milk. Now I'm going to use eight ounces of almond milk. I like with oat milk better because it gives it a little bit more thickness and it adds like that oaty flavor to it that kind of gives it like a, um, kind of gives it like a fullness to it, you know, kind of makes it feel a little bit more, um, <laughs> not nutritious, but like more like a like a smoothie kind of, you know. Uh, but the two people I made this for, my uh, my lady and one of my best friends, I did theirs with the almond milk because that's what I had, and they freaking loved it. And my lady, she has also had the oat milk, the oat milk version, which she also likes, but loved the almond milk version. So we are going almond milk with this ingredients, okay? And then, like I said, the bourbon trays for the creamer float, and then we're also going to have there is uh, the creamer float was made with. Um, bourbon trace creamer and it's buffalo trace creamer buffalo trace creamer not bourbon trace buffalo trace uh almond milk so this the creamer float is going to be that of uh, my original recipe for that and then the uh, hot chocolate uh cocktail is going to be slightly modified with the almond milk instead of the oat milk okay uh, I talk a lot, as you guys know, you've seen my videos before, so let's run back through this one more time before we get this milk on the stove and start getting these ingredients ready to have a good time, all right? So, the salted caramel, you know we're going to call it something different because it's for the Born and Play show, and this is for my super hackers out there. We're going to call this the hacked salted caramel, all right? So for the hacked salted caramel, we're going to go two ounces whiskey, okay? You're going to go eight ounces of your milk. You're going to go three scoops of the salted caramel hot chocolate. You're gonna go, uh, you're gonna blend that together, all right? Then for your creamer float, you're gonna go uh, one ounce of the bourbon creamer, and you're gonna go two ounces of a half and half creamer, or like I did the oat milk, which is thick enough, kind of thick like a half and half creamer. And then for this newer, slightly varied version, you're gonna put, I'm gonna do about a cap full, you know, cause, um, uh, uh, vanilla extract is quite power powerful itself. So I'm gonna literally do the cap that it came with You know, I'm gonna do the cap full of that for the bourbon creamer for flow Okay, and I don't think that that'll make it too sweet or too overpower It'll, It should add just enough of like a really pretty fine Vanilla ish caramel -ish flavor to the float to really make this drink like elevate one more time And then for a garnish, I'm not a fan of marshmallows But I do put a marshmallow on top of it because it's super pretty. It's super cute. It's super nice and it really reminds you of the feeling that I'm going for, which is super warm, cozy, and just like uh, winter time. I want this drink to make you feel like you're sitting around your family enjoying a nice time with a nice hot cocoa that you know got some something extra in there. And everyone else is curious as to what you're drinking because it smells amazing and you're saying it tastes so good too. So that's the idea and that's, that's, that's the marshmallow. Marshmallows are wholesome. 
All right, so now that we know what's in it, now we know how we're gonna do it, let's get this milk on the stove so we can get this heated up and then uh, we'll be right back to get everything mixed up in there and get delicious, right? Left. <laughs> All right, so it is milk, so it obviously will not take that long. I don't know how many of you have ever, you know, warmed up milk before on the stove, but it is milk, so it does not take that long at all to heat up. Uh, and if you aren't careful, it bubbles over. So, you know, we're gonna keep a quick eye on that, get some of our other stuff and uh, some of our other things ready. For right now, we can actually, if we want, we can actually start beating our uh, uh, float so that we can have this guy ready when that's time. So we can go ahead and this here, you can get these, this is like a whisk ball. You can get these at any cooking store or if you are into fitness or wanna get back into fitness and you plan on getting one of those water bottles that you use for your pre-workouts, a lot of those come with these in them. Pop that boy right out. Throw it in the fucking shaker. Reason you want to do that, want to shake it with that in there, is because it helps aerate the uh, it helps aerate the uh, the creamer so they can get that you know that consistency we want. We don't want it whipped, but we do want it like to froth up a little bit so that it floats right on top of the right on top of our uh, concoction without worrying about it seeping down and dragging too much. Also, I'm using a clear glass so you guys can see how cool it looks once I do throw the float on there. Typically, I throw it in my big boy, my marble 14 ouncer, but we're gonna throw it in here just so you guys can see how cool it looks. It's a 10 ounce uh, cocktail glass. Uh, yeah, we got that guy in there. Like I said, I did want to add the vanilla. And actually, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm okay. I'm okay how it is. I was about to add like another half shot to my situation here, but we don't need another half shot. Hmm, check on this milk once I drop this vanilla in there because like I said, milk, it, it's quick. That is literally more. I think that is enough. Plenty. Plenty, because we're gonna need this. Oh, and I don't, I don't want to hide my cocoa. I want y'all to see that, just in case y'all are wondering, like miss what I said, what I said it was, or whatever case may be, because that shit is phenomenal. All right, let me go check on the uh, milk real quick before I start beating, uh, shaking that up, and all that good stuff. So we're getting close. So let's try to get this beaten a little bit. We'll probably beat it some more afterwards, but for right now, let's get it beaten a little bit. <laughs> I can try to get this to froth up. Now we're gonna stop that because I wanna catch this milk before it gets too bad. Let's get this open right now so that this is ready. I like to do the hot chocolate when it's like at its hottest point because that's when it like mixes really well with the uh, powder creamer. I was right on time. It just starts to do that little tiny thing it does when it's about to bubble. And because it's milk bubbles over way too fast. Like I said, three scoops. I love hot chocolate. So my three scoops are a little bit more girthy. The first one will be what I consider a, a, a tablespoon. The second one's gonna be a little bit higher, you know, a little bit of a mound there. Like I said, I love my hot cocoa. And you know, we'll do the second one, third one, in between the first and second size. Whisk that up in there. Now, when I first started doing this, I would whisk my hot chocolate, make the hot chocolate, and then dump the bourbon into this and whisk it as well. But for my two friends, uh, for the two people I did it for last time, my lady and my best friend, for those two, or my, one of my best friends, for those two, I left their whiskey in the cup and then I made the hot chocolate and dumped the hot chocolate in there. It was because I was making it for two people though. This is all going in the same cup, so I don't have to do it for that. I prefer to mix the whiskey with the beverage, especially when you're stirring it, just because it really helps it get all in there. And you know you're not going to have like random spots of it being too strong like sometimes a drink in the very beginning is too strong or at the very end is too strong or in the middle <laughs> sometimes if you get the ice in there right and you get the drink weird enough it's too strong and it's a lot of times because it wasn't mixed good enough you know so if it's too strong in the very beginning that means they put the alcohol in the bottom and then they made their mixture first, probably poured the ice in, then poured the mixture in over top of it. So when you put your straw in there, you're drinking straight alcohol and then finally get into the flavor. If it's too strong the other way around when it's at the end, then it's because they did the opposite. They made their mixture. Hmm, I wonder how much more can I fit in there? They made their mixture. Well, I want room for my uh, flow, so we'll stop right there. They made the mixture, poured it in, poured the ice in, then poured their alcohol in there. Sometimes it's called a float, but you know, yeah. All right, so now we got our hot cocoa in there. We got our whiskey hot cocoa, our hot turkey cocoa. We're gonna beat this a little bit more. Get y'all with that one, the bartender one.
think that's thick enough, frothy enough. We're gonna crack that open. Now, in order to help me help it float, you're gonna see me do a technique you see a lot of bartenders do. Spoon, drink. Sad part is this might float, uh, spill a little bit because of the type of container it is. It's not really a container like that, but we'll see, we'll see. Now, you wanna put the spoon like kind of there and pour the beverage over the spoon. The spoon will slow down the pour, keeping it more likely for the drink to not just drop down. If I were just free pour, I could do it, but it would take a lot more patience and a lot more time to get it done. This way, still gotta be patient, but you don't have to be as patient. And let's see if we get it thick enough. I do think we did. I do think we definitely got to think enough. Hit it with some little pockets right here. Just to try to make it pretty, you know, get all the froth, get all the all the froth up there on one color kind of deal. Just for presentation. But as you can see on the camera, it's definitely floating. Definitely got a nice little float there in between, a nice little between layer there, you know. Would have been thicker if I, ooh, poopy poop poop pants. <laughs> little spill. Would have been thicker if I had more of that oat milk. Because if I'm not mistaken, I put a little bit of actual milk in there for when I made it for those for the other people. But yeah. There you go, Super Hackers. The uh, salty turkey. The hacked salty turkey. Beautiful drink. If you got a flame, toast your marshmallow. Don't even want like he in a hot tub. Boom, Super Hackers. That's beautiful, isn't it? Let's try it. That is phenomenal. They were right. Well, no, I like that a lot. This one reminds me more of like hot milk, if that makes sense. Instead of just straight up hot chocolate, hot caramel chocolate, it reminds me more of like hot, hot, hot chocolate milk and not hot cocoa. Hot cocoa is a little bit more richer and to me it should be a little bit more thicker. And that's why I use the oat milk because it makes, makes it a little bit more richer, a little bit more thick. And that oat milk carries a taste with it that's just as a fullness to it. it makes you feel like man i'm getting some pro i'm getting some some nutrients even though you know but this still slaps slaps like hong kong food you feel me uh yeah that's amazing that is amazing y'all but uh yeah uh we're about to get to some video games here in a few minutes i'm excited about that excited to uh get back to some video games with y'all um Hope you guys make the drink at home. If you do, let me know how it turned out for you. Let me know if you changed it up at all. And that floor, the vanilla, I was right. Maybe that's why the uh, froth was a little bit less frothy. But yeah, amazing drink, delicious, phenomenal. I will see you guys in a little bit back for, uh, for a video game. I don't know what I'm playing just yet. I'm thinking Call of Duty. We'll play Trial of the New War Zone, maybe. And I'm also thinking Vampire Survivors, but we'll see. I do want to play two games. We'll see you back here in a second, Super Hackers. Bring your drink. Get comfortable. Let's play some video games. Super Hack Bro, I'll be back in a second.